Well, hey, everybody, this is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. Let's talk about cold weather resistance in a shipping container home. Uh, since mine is almost done and I still have uh, the insulation exposed so we can look at it. So I turned off the heat in here about 40 minutes ago. So let's take a look at what it is. So it's almost a minus five with wind chill outside. It is way below 32. So I'm going to guess 28 or something. I'll look when we walk out with the uh, thermal. But let me go ahead and show you I, how I insulate. <clears throat> so uh, this will eventually be a door that will pass through to the outside. But the first layer of insulation is this uh, bubble wrap insulation that reflects heat in and out so let's take a look here everybody so <clears throat> all right 64 ish on the wood yeah it was 70 uh six wait hold on 59 i'm sorry on the wood it was 64 in here when i turned it off so in about 45 minutes i've lost six or seven degrees let's take a look at the bubble wrap notice it's the same right so I have a layer of bubble wrap. Now, underneath that, it's just the shipping container, right? So it just passes through. Every now and then, I've I've opened that up right there and inspected. I never have a condensation. I never have a rain problem. I never have any water problem. So let's move up. So over the uh, bubble wrap, I put, uh, if you look, mineral wool. That's just not regular old insulation. Mineral wool is uh, more dense. It's made of spun stone, so it's fire resistant, almost fireproof. It'd have to be like 2000 degrees for that stuff to st start melting. So, um, and you can see how thick it is uh, because of the beam. So I've got uh, about a four inch gap between the drywall, the uh, mineral wool, which is a full bat, and then the foil wrap, and then the shipping container. So then you notice that I have the thick drywall, not the half inch. I've got the bigger than that, uh, five eighths, I guess. Uh, if I could have found three quarter, I would have put that in there. So that is the things. Let's take a look here. What is the roof telling me? Roof's telling me it's 59. All right, the uh, insulation's 58. So. I would say this is a pretty snug. I would say this is a pretty snug method of insulation that doesn't use spray foam. And I didn't want to use spray foam because I've seen a lot of online stuff where mold is in the spray foam. If it's they don't get open cell or closed cell, they get the wrong kind. If it's open cell, it absorbs water. So if they get any spill at all uh, of water in their house. Uh, you know, from a sink or whatever, uh, running a propane heater, which would be really bad, but people do it, um, or, or really wet, burning really wet wood. A lot of water comes out of wood in a, a fireplace, a lot. Anyway, it's causing mold for people who do spray foam. So I did the mineral wool because uh, mineral wool is um, agroscopic, uh, phobic, agroscopic. Uh, it hates water. So water doesn't even pass through. Then I have the bubble wrap, so water doesn't pass through that. So, uh, and uh, the, mo the, both of those products are absolutely mold resistant, like big time mold resistant. In addition, you'll notice like in rooms where I expect it to be uh, a little wet, like this will be a bathroom, I've got green board, which is the right thing to have. So I've done everything right. So let's take a look here, uh, it is cold. Let's continue to take a look at the study of the heat. All right, so this is a heat pump. So it's both an AC and a heat pump. I turned it off for the video about 40, 40 minutes ago. And on the floor, I can feel cold air blowing. So I am not very, um, this house isn't done. So there, I'm, there's no caulk, there's no everything in there. But uh, the wind is up to 29 miles an hour today. So a significant wind is battering. Um, I could have closed those doors last night and kept it even warmer in here, but I like to look out and look at my horses and whatnot. So let's take a look at what the uh, window says it is. 40 at the window, right? 40 at the window. So we'll go ahead and walk outside and we'll take a look at what's going on out there. So there's another view of my house. I'm really getting whacked with this wind, but I'm telling you, inside 
it's super snug, even though I haven't finished caulking, even though I'm using uh, hand-hewn timbers, which naturally have a little more gapping in them. Uh, but my biggest problem you can see behind me is I don't have the foundation underneath these shipping containers. So let me see what temperature it is outside. 26, but like I said, with wind chill, I'm down into the five, right? So 26, there's a 20. It all depends on what I shoot at. Or again, there's a 19. So I'm gonna say I'm, at, I'm at around 19 or so. My chickens are not moving. They're all staying. <laughs> they're all staying in. They're, they're not going anywhere today. So it is cold. So officially cold. So, uh, But we saw that it was 60 degrees inside. So that's a full uh, eight, uh, 80, what, 64? <laughs> Help me here with the math. So uh, 40 degree uh, difference. So that's pretty good. All right. So here's a problem for me, I, and I could have fixed this during the summer. I didn't because I hate doing work twice. Underneath my house, I raised it two feet. That way I'm way up beyond what a floodplain will be. Additionally, the floor of the house itself will be at this sill plate. So it'll be a tiled earthen floor. There'll be uh, an entrance into a Michigan-style basement under both of these for additional storage. And on the floors themselves... I will put uh, floor heating underneath on the floor. So I didn't want to spray insulation underneath there. Um, and I hate doing work twice. This will all be earth bagged, all sealed in. Now I could have done that. And I would have done it if I had been anywhere than central Texas where I only get, you know, like four or five days this cold a year. And if I can't survive those, I, my ancestors would be angry with me because they are people of the north, Vikings. And so, you know, I, while I'm not a big fan of the cold, I can make it, you know. So, uh, but uh, anyway, I raised this thing up for a couple of different reasons. One, it gets me higher than the uh, scorpions. It makes it a little harder on fire ants to get me. Uh, and lastly, I want the room for when I dig a basement, I don't have to dig eight foot down. I only have to dig, you know, four or five foot down to get a six foot ceiling. So uh, those are the reasons that I did that. The disadvantage in a day like today with high winds, super cold, and same thing with heat is it, that's a huge heat sink underneath there. Uh, and very cold. Additionally, all my windows, I didn't get time to build storm windows this year. They'll all have storm windows in there. Um, I'll look at the specs on this particular heat pump. Um, I remember it being about 1,200 BTU. Uh, that could be wrong. Maybe it was designed for 1,200 square feet. That seems right. I think I bought three times. Now, I slowly worked my way up. So I uh, originally bought exactly what a shipping container would need. Oh, it's so much warmer in here, guys. Uh, exactly what a shipping container would need for heating and cooling, which was 320 square feet. It could not keep up. I I don't know where they get those masks from, where the engineers are coming up from. Uh, three, maybe uh, it would work if my normal temperature was 70 and I wanted 72, uh, but it, it was didn't work. So then I bought double that capacity. So I went to 680 uh, square feet of heating and cooling. Still didn't work. Uh, I tell you, it overran. So this one, I went three or four times what I should go with all the insulation. And now this thing works just fine. I'm going to turn it on now so it'll get noisy. But I just wanted you to let you know that uh, a heat pump, and I'll put what model this is. I've had no brand loyalty. I went out to Amazon. I found one that had a, a, a low um, quick start on it. So it didn't click. <laughs> and consume all of my, um, like the relays on the older stuff that just really causes a voltage spike. So I got a low voltage on, or easy voltage on a uh, heat pump, and uh, we'll turn it on together. And it <laughs> really keeps it warm in here. I'll come in and turn it off on a regular basis. Uh, but it, it does consume about a thousand watts. So uh, we'll, we'll walk out and take a look at that in just a second too. All right, so there I will go. I just turned this on. Uh, I'm going to let it do its thing. 
um, you'll see that it has automatic feature, it has AC, it has uh, dehumidify, and it has heat. Right now I'm on the heat. Uh, that would be for automatic fan if I wanted that. And I, I have done that and it does its job, but mostly I maintain it manually. Um, and that is because I like it quiet. And uh, so I turn this thing off. So it's a keystone and I'll put down in the, uh, you know, um, description what that particular one is. I don't get paid at all from any of these. I'm not an affiliate at the time of recording. But I also got this, um, a lot of times I, I as I travel, I end up with uh, mini splits and heaters that um, are not intuitive. <laughs> and I, I can't figure them out. And I'm a smart man. So I also went online and I looked at all of the control panels. The up, down, logical. The buttons, logic. I, in the middle of the dark, in the, in the middle and the night, I can't see. I could hit this and turn it on. Uh, sometimes I, with, with my toe. <laughs> So, uh, that's one thing that I do. So, you do you. So, now it's running, and it'll get it up to 74 or whatever I, I want it to be at. You know, I could put it at 72 if I want it. And uh, we'll, we'll take a look here at what's blowing out, right? 100 degrees is blowing out of there. That's a heat pump, everybody. That's not a heater. That's a heat pump. So, 102. Really low, laying it down. That'll really help. This is 320 square feet to heat and cool with the insulation unfinished. Uh, I still need to caulk. I still need to, you know, weather strip. There's, I need, need storm windows over the stained glass windows. Lots of things to be done. So we're sitting in what I use to run power to this place. I do have big solar and uh, I do have a Jackery with a couple of small 200 watt panels that I keep. The Jackeries are running my ACU um, refrigerator, mostly. Um, although right now it's on these. And it's on these because with the heater, I don't have enough solar for that. So uh, this unit is running. It's an F-150 hybrid with a 7.2 kilowatts generator built into it. So the way this thing works, it turns on. It tops off the 7.2 kilowatts worth of battery, depletes them down to a certain percentage, and then it, it turns on again. So it about uh when the weather's nice it will go hours before it turns on so let's take a look at what my power load is all right so right there you have uh the two different um phases right so 1900 watts on one because i'm running a little floor heater on my feet as well as an air conditioning unit um starlink uh a couple of computers and some lamps all on that the other side and I said about a thousand watts well today with the heat uh, I'm doing 2,000 watts because of the Delta but uh, for AC when it's not big I see down to a thousand so there you have it so that's probably the heat pump and that is everything else that's in there including a second heater so I'm running two heaters 4,000 watts um, and once it gets hot enough I'll turn that off so uh, pretty good uh, gas mileage on this, pretty good. What I like most about this particular vehicle, um, one, I'm immune from power outages, right? So it doesn't matter what happens in the rest of the nation. As long as I have gas in this or solar in my big batteries, I'm okay. But um, so I'm immune from that, but it's super quiet. Right now the truck is running to feed that much power. But if I wasn't feeding that much power, just my computer and my Starlink and, and the refrigerator that kicks on every now and then, uh, it goes maybe once an hour, maybe once an hour. And it turns on at this volume, much quieter than your conventional generators, right? So I'm sitting in here while it's running. I bet you can hardly tell it through the audio. So that's a good thing. So. <clears throat> So my family is full mostly of sweet women, and uh, they contact me on a regular day basis on days like this to make sure that I'm still alive. Listen, if I if I perish out here, then sweet baby Jesus has done his job because this, this is hard work, uh, and I would probably have preferred a more cushy environment, but the Spartan in me, uh, the Viking in me, kind of likes this, so... Uh, but a couple of different things. If you're in a, uh, a environment worse than mine, you and you raise your shipping containers, 
just get the foam board and just immediately go ahead and put the skirt underneath them. I don't because I hate doing work twice, but that's a stubborn uh, component of my personality. And uh, uh, it doesn't always serve me. It doesn't serve me in this particular fashion. I should have got, went and as soon as I raised them, the next day I should have put a skirt around them. Uh, would have helped me a lot, but I, I use it for storage. As you saw, I slide my tools under it and whatnot. So, you know, I don't care. But um, you would care if this was your home, right? Uh, but I'm a bachelor out here, and, um, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm making do. All right, so the heater's been running a little bit. Let me check the heat, what's in here. You saw me turn it on real time in the camera. It's only been running about five or ten minutes. I'm going to check the temperature. We were at what, 58? I'll check it now. 64. So you see that didn't take long to, to warm up in there. And, and you know, the light sockets are, aren't done yet. And there's all play, all kinds of gaps that haven't been uh, caulked yet. Uh, it's pretty leaky, to be honest. Uh, this room... 57 so you know it's uh, the heat is getting in here so uh you know it'll warm up so that's not bad from uh 20 degrees to 57 to 64 it depends what part of the house i'm in it'll eventually all warm up i do have another heater in that room on my feet uh because the feet part is where uh, all of i can feel any kind of a breeze a current draft uh and the floors themselves. Oh, let me show you that. Okay, so the floors. All right, you saw I don't have a skirt, so your camera's pointing down. Forgive my dirty floors. They are, at, it's the raw floor. Ah, oh, there's the problem, right? 40 degrees on that raw floor. And uh, 44, where there's a rug, it's a little better. But nothing to write home about. So there we go. So going back to this insulation, super good methodology. If I had put skirts on it with the same thing, I could have I could have glued uh, or got these mats that come in a fiber form where they're kind of thick, uh, like a little bit of uh, epoxy is glued them together, or maybe they're just spun that way. I don't know, but they do come in a board format. So I could have put them on hardy plank, put them around, all around the outside, and I would be much toastier. Than I am right now, but I'm a stubborn man. Uh, there'll be hyper adobe along the outside, uh, and I need to pour and put in the footings, which is my next project. As soon as this cold snap lifts, I'm starting that project. So uh, I didn't want a lot of stuff in my way. I didn't want to have to undo a bunch of stuff, but I'm two years into this place. You know, it takes a long time to self build. So, anyway, there you go. If you're wanting how to heat and cool a shipping container home, with a, a new, different way than spray foam insulation, which I personally do not like um, for many reasons. And you, uh, you do you, right? <laughs> uh, if you don't like it, good. Uh, I don't like it either. But I didn't use spray foam. I use all natural materials that are fireproof, uh, mold resistant, uh, highly mold resistant, and uh, doesn't allow the shipping container to sweat or rain or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, and I'm using one heat pump right to heat and cool my house you saw my energy load at a peak i've got a refrigerator running the jackery's charging uh, a small heater on my feet which you know i like my feet warm and then this bigger unit running and it's blowing 102 out of the front and it'll warm this thing up pretty fast uh, as soon as it detects 72 it'll turn off in here um, but I usually turn it off first. So this is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. You're welcome to borrow my uh, installation ID. I have many, many videos on this. I do a video blog of my personal build journal. I'm not selling anything. I'm not expected to be a YouTube celebrity. This is my personal build journal, and you're welcome to just ride along with it. Uh, I'm slow, but I get it done. I get it done. All right, like, subscribe. Bye.